California Congresswoman Sarah Jacobs and Representative Blake Moore from Utah are leading the Congressional Future Caucus, the nation's first and only bipartisan caucus for young members of Congress. The group is working to enact solutions to problems facing America's youngest generations. With a new Congress on its way in, Representative Sarah Jacobs and Blake Moore are here now to tell us more about their work and their goals this session. We're also joined by Layla Zaydin. Uh, Zaydan, sorry, excuse me, president and CEO of the Millennial Action Project. Welcome to you all. Thank you for having us. So let me start with you, Representative Jacobs. In your, in your view, what are the priorities for the younger members of the country? You know, we have had a lot of conversation about how the Democratic Party in particular skews older. There don't seem to have um, been made many opportunities for leadership advancement, et cetera, for the younger vanguard. So I think folks are really curious to hear what the younger members of Congress are bringing to the table here. Yeah, I appreciate the question, especially uh, as one of the youngest members of this Congress. Uh, and I was newly elected by uh, the members of my caucus to be in our leadership. So I'll be the youngest member of House Democratic leadership as well. Um, and look, I think young people really turned out in this last election. And I think it was clear that the issues that they want us to focus on are issues like climate change, issue, issues like respect for marriage, issues uh, like working on data privacy and all of the various things that we are going through right now uh, as young people. And that's what uh, Blake and I and all of the uh, other members of, uh, of our caucus are going to continue doing. Yeah, Representative Moore, you know, there's so much uh, animus in the sort of national political dialogue between Republicans and Democrats, between liberals and conservatives. Um, what is the key to getting Republicans on board with, uh, with you know, working with people across the aisle or just or even just working at all uh, without getting tarred as some kind of sellout or swamp creature or, you know, all the, I'm, I'm sure all the, the things you've heard in your time on Capitol Hill? Yes, name calling has definitely increased, and uh, it's just stuff you have to deal with. You have to you have to understand why you're back here, and is that to solve problems or is that to to just pander for 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 whether or not you're going to take some heat in a in a potential primary? Um, like in 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 adding to the the previous question, like I know a lot of my uh, younger constituents are are nervous about you know, things like social security and debt and deficit. And um, and I come from a state that's very fiscally responsible and they get really frustrated when they see, you know, kind of what we're, what we're you know, the constant deficits that we've run for 20 plus years, right? And uh, th that's something that's, that it's just on the minds of us folks as well. Um, coming together, like there's more of it than, than, than we like to give it credit. Uh, like the work that Representative Jacobs and I do on armed services, right? There's a small portion of each of our parties that you know don't support you know this the, the the military bill that we put together every year, but the vast majority of Congress does, Republican and Democrat. And so there is still lots of opportunities like that that uh, exist, and we'll keep working on those. And you know, I always tell the people the key is you don't have to give up your 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 values. You, know, you don't have to give up your conservative or your progressive principles uh, to accomplish something back here. And I, I look no further than my work with Jared Huffman from Northern California, right? The Great Salt Lake is a hugely important thing in, in Utah. And, and he and I uh, don't always agree on every topic, but we came together and we built a relationship and we, we, got, a, we got a really important bill done. And uh, Layla, you, you are in charge of an organization, the Millennial Action Project, that uh, Br Brianna and I uh, spoke to um, at your awards uh, ceremony uh, last week. Uh, tell us more about the project of kind of representing younger people's values uh, in, in uh, elected government. Yeah, well, thanks again for, for coming to that. It was uh, a treat to have you both there. Millennial Action Project is the largest nonpartisan organization of young lawmakers across the country. Um, we exist simply to create the permission structures for young Democrats, young Republicans, young people who are in this really hard job of, of elected office to really connect with one another along solutions, 
um, and really to tell the story that, um, you know, as, as Congressman Moore mentioned, there's a lot more collaboration than than we like to give it credit for. And so our work is about facilitating those connections, supporting the young leaders who uh, are a part of our work, and then making sure that uh, their story is told so that people can see the great leadership of, of folks like uh, Congressman Jacobs and Congressman Moore. So here's what I want to put to all three of you. It does not surprise me, um, Representative Jake, uh, uh, sorry, Moore, you were talking about there are a lot of opportunities for bipartisanship, a lot of things that folks within Congress across the aisle agree on, and you made reference to um, some military funding. I don't question that. That is unfortunately very, very true that there are a lot of priorities that are congressional priorities, where there's a lot of bipartisanship that don't necessarily reflect the priorities or desires of the American public. So when we're talking about young voters, young voters' priorities are very clear. They talk about things like student debt cancellation, for instance, which frankly drove a lot of the youth turnout that was able to secure positive midterm results or more positive than expected midterm results for Democrats. Yet, it doesn't seem to me that there's a lot of movement from a legislative perspective on issues like those. And so many young voters are disillusioned precisely because they think that they are sold a false bill of goods. There's lip service given to their interests and the value of young voters during election seasons. But just after elections, as we saw in midterm, we get terrible um, disclosures about the likelihood of those kinds of policies coming to pass. So I'll, I'll come to you, Representative Jacobs. What do you make of young people who will say, it doesn't seem like I should continue to vote for Democrats or see them as a party that should be my home, when they don't seem to be standing firm on any of these big, critical issues like student debt reform, like um, uh, health care, like housing? These are concerns that people who are millennials, who are not spring chickens, by the way, they're in their 30s and even early 40s, are struggling with. Yeah, no, I appreciate the question. And trust me, I know I have to remind my colleagues all the time that millennials, in fact, are real adults, not teenagers <laughs> anymore. We're having kids. We're, you know, buying houses. Um, look, I think maybe that feeling was more true uh, a year or two ago. I remember talking to my friends and peers uh, and them really wondering if we were going to be able to get things done on the priorities that young people cared about. But I really think that's changed over the past year where we passed the biggest investment in climate change in history, where we passed the first gun violence prevention legislation since I was in elementary school, uh, where we've actually been able to get a lot done on the priorities of young people. Has it been everything we want? No, of course not. And we're going to continue working on it. And frankly, the more young people turn out and vote, the more young people who run for office themselves, the more we're going to be able to get done on these priorities. Mm. So, but Representative Jacobs, I don't mean to focus on, on you here, but as the Democrat in the budget, I don't necessarily expect everyone across the, the aisle to have the same priorities here. Young voters do tend to align uh, in a Democrat direction precisely because they do care about issues like climate change. But here's the issue. A lot of majority of young voters voted for people like Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, because they had much more substantial climate investments. Uh, I believe Bernie's was something like $17 trillion. We had, what, about it was cut and cut and cut 500 odd billion dollars in this climate investment through Build Back Better, which, yes, is the biggest historically. But given the exigency of the crisis, every climate expert in the world says it's not enough. So if you at a certain point, at one point, does it become a kind of climate denialism and covering for establishment politicians, conservatives within the Democratic Party to herald these accomplishments as though they are anywhere close to meeting the crisis that is so concerning to so many young voters. Yeah, look, is the Inflation Reduction Act everything we wanted on climate change? No, of course it's not. And many of us in the House, in the Progressive Caucus, were fighting really hard for much bigger investments for the Build Back Better Act, which would have done a lot more. But I still think it's incredibly important to acknowledge that we have been able to get things done because that momentum is going to be what allows us to be able to do more. Um, you know, I, I think I, I'm a young person, right? I don't have kids yet in part because I'm worried there might not be a planet for them to live on. Um, so, so I feel the urgency too. But the fact of the matter is we have to work within the structure that we have. And until more young people are voting and more young people are running for office and getting here, uh, we're, we have to work with the people that we have here. And what we have here, we were able to get a huge investment done. And I'm hopeful that when people see that investment start to be implemented and see that actually we're not necessarily talking about 
sacrifices that we can do the climate action we need to do while also making people's lives better, uh, that we'll be able to get more done on that front. Representative Moore, uh, you know, we're coming out of an election cycle in which uh, Republicans did, I think, not as well as expected, even though they did retake uh, the House. Um, I'm seeing a lot of, uh, there's tremendous, actually, ideological differences, I think, in the Republican Party. Or there's, you know, we're, there's a kind of a fight going on over who will be, over whether Kevin McCarthy will be the speaker. Um, what, what do you think Republicans need to focus on to capture more of, uh, I think, a vote that's out there that is frustrated with a, a, the Biden administration, but it didn't, obviously didn't quite communicate what people were looking for and, and didn't, you know, rise to expectations in, uh, in this past cycle? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thrilled to be in the majority. Thrilled that the Americans have trusted us with that. And we can't squander it away. So uh, we need to come together on January 3rd. Maybe there's a few rounds. Who knows exactly what's going to happen? But um, this isn't unprecedented. You saw similar factions within the Democrat Party two years ago when Speaker Pelosi was having, you know, similar drama with a small with a small majority. These things, these things take place. A lot of members try to leverage this for, you know, what, whatever it is that they can accomplish during this time of negotiation until January 3rd. Um, but we need to show up for the American people. We need to make sure that we use the commitment to America and the, uh, and the various points laid out in that plan and focus on, on, on those types of things, right? So um, we, you know, we need to capitalize on what people are frustrated with President Biden with historic inflation, with, you know, gas prices are what they are. Like we need to do our part to sort of get that going in the right direction and show the American people that we that we're responsible to govern. And uh, and I look forward to the opportunity to do that. Uh, Layla, I'll, I'll give you the last word. Uh, you know, what would be your advice to, uh, to members of Congress to kind of bring down the uh, sort of very nasty rhetoric, uh, the the, the climate of political anger um, out in the universe right now? Listen, I think what we need now is leaders and we have them. That's the great thing. We have good leaders already in Congress. We've got two of them on this call right here. And the world needs to see more of the ways in which they are focusing on the issues that young people care about, that they are effective at advancing these ideas and that they are doing the work day in and day out to deliver results for the American people. So my advice is just more of the same, do it louder for those in the back and let's get more young people out there voting, running and leaving. Mm. Well, we appreciate all three of you joining us today. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we'll have more Rising right after this.